So welcome back. We are looking at default reasoning. We have looked at three approaches and we are looking at the last for now which is the auto epistemic reasoning essentially. Now default logic has a set of default rules that determine what assumptions are consistent to make but they are outside the language. Circumscription has default reasoning built into the language but is not in a position to make consistent assumptions. Auto epistemic logic combines the features of both in some sense. It introduces a modal operator. So, this is something that we have not studied very much, but you can see that modal operators are outside the classical logic as we have studied. In fact, they are in classical logic, but they are outside of FOL and population logic that we have studied. And this modal op operator B stands for belief essentially. So, when we say B alpha, alpha is a sentence from whichever language you are looking at. It can be proportional logic, it can be first order logic. But when you say B alpha, then that sentence is an argument to this modal operator B and it says that we believe in alpha. We believe that alpha is true. So, in auto epistemic reasoning, we would say that a bird not believed to be flightless. So, this is the important part not believed to be flightless. So, this is flightless and this part says not believe. You do not believe that it cannot fly. If you do not believe that it cannot fly, then you can infer that it can fly. So, this belief operator has certain properties that we should look at and these properties will be useful in determining what is the reasonable set of beliefs that one can hold in a knowledge base where there are sentences with the belief operators. We can say that a set of beliefs epsilon again is stable, but this community calls epsilon as an expansion. To be stable, if it satisfies the following properties, one is closure under entailment. What does that mean? It says that if epsilon entails alpha, then alpha must belong to the entire epsilon. That you must add everything that can be inferred into the set of beliefs. Positive introspection and negative introspection. Positive introspection says that if alpha is in the epsilon, you must add believe alpha in the epsilon essentially. Now, you can see that this will of course lead to an infinite set of sentences, but in practice we make some assumptions that we will only go to a certain depth. Negative as assumption introspection says if alpha does not belong to the set of beliefs, then add that I do not believe in alpha to the set of beliefs or to the expansion. So, when we talk about entailment, we just treat this whole thing as just another predicate. If it is true in the left hand side, then we go to the right hand side, else we do not I think. So, now we can talk about stable expansions and they are as follows that given a knowledge base with statements using the belief operator and the three constraints that we have spoke, spoken about closure under entailment, positive and negative introspection. We define a stable expansion to be the minimal set that satisfies the constraints. So, pi belongs to the expansion if the knowledge base is always there. This is positive introspection that for every alpha that is in the set of beliefs, we add B alpha. And for every alpha that is not in the set of beliefs, we add not B alpha, negative introspection. If we add all these things to the knowledge base and then if you can derive pi or pi is entailed, then you can put it in the set of beliefs essentially. So, this whole thing can be seen as delta again, the set of assumptions, but this time the assumptions come from the introspection constraints. So, the procedure to enumerate stable expansions involves guessing and replacing such statements B alpha or not B alpha or just statements of the kind B alpha by either true or false and then verifying whether everything is consistent. 
So, we will see an example. So, if you want to con compute stable expansions, uh, we will eventually reduce the knowledge base to what we call as objective sentences. Objective sentences, they do not have belief operators. So, we would guess. So, when we say guess, uh, it typically translates into search. So, we will try this option, we will try that option, we will try that option and so on. But we are saying here that we will guess, it has no, so uh, a set of, op a sentence is objective if it has no belief operator. So, we will re replace belief of op sentences with belief operators with either true or false. So, let us say that there are n non-objective sentences or n sentences which have belief operators and for the sake of simplicity, let us say that the arguments are objective essentially. So, there is no nesting involved. This is just to understand the procedure. Then you do the following that replace each such sentence by either true or false. So, you are guessing whether it is true or false. Then you simplify the knowledge base and call the resulting knowledge base as the objective knowledge base K, KBO. Then you do the checks. If belief alpha was replaced by true, then verify that alpha is entailed by the extended knowledge base. If not, then that cannot be a stable expansion. Likewise, if belief alpha was replaced by false, then make sure that alpha is not entailed by the knowledge base. If both these conditions are satisfied, then what you are left with is an objective uh, knowledge base uh, and the entailments of this objective knowledge base are the objective part of the stable expansion. So, eventually we want to know the objective statements. At least in this logic, we are not interested in knowing if some agent believes something. So, we are not talking about agents here, we are just talking about beliefs in general. Uh, after this, uh, we will move on to uh, multi agent systems in which we will talk about one agent believing what another agent knows or we will not work with belief which is a little bit more complex. We will work with a similar modal operator called knows the K operator. Agent B knows that some alpha or agent B knows that agent C knows that alpha. Those kind of statements we will do when we look at this uh, topic called epistemic logic. So, let us look at the Twitty Chili expansion. We have the procedure now to work with this. So, this is a knowledge base that is given to us. Uh, there are two sentences about Twitty and Chili, the two rules, the, 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 the auto epistemic rules. And, uh, we know that chili cannot play. So, we try replacing the, because we have converted it into proportional logic, we are not working with variables anymore. So, there are two belief statements and we will try the four combinations when we will replace them with true or false essentially. So, the four, let us begin with the first one. In the first combination, both are true. We believe that Twitty cannot fly and we believe that chili cannot fly. So, we will add this to the knowledge base or we will substitute these with true. So, what happens to our sentences which had those belief statements? Uh, because we have replaced uh, this part, belief believes that Twitty cannot fly with true. So, that part comes here. So, we have not true. So, not of true is false. So, this whole thing becomes false and therefore, the whole thing reduces to a tautology and we can throw it away. Because the knowledge base is a conjunct and adding uh, a, a true statement to that does not change anything or adding true to that does not change or top to that does not change anything. Likewise, for the chili statement. Then we do the checks. Our extended knowledge base, nothing has changed. All those statements have vanished about the, imp the implications and we are left with the objective part. 
Now, in this we had assumed that they cannot fly. Now, in our knowledge base we know that chili cannot fly. So, our knowledge base also entails chili cannot fly. So, where what I have written in green is that that test is satisfied or that test is passed essentially. But there is no way to show that Tweety cannot fly is true. So, that is not entailed by the knowledge base. So, that test fails. So, this is not a stable expansion. Let us try another combination. So, we tried true and true. Now, let us try true and false. So, for Tweety, we believe that it cannot fly and for Chili, we do not believe that it cannot fly. So, for Tweety, it again reduces to the top uh, or, or to truth, but for Chili, it reduces to a implication because this part which is not false is true, it just vanishes and we are left with saying that if Chili is a bird, then Chili can fly. Then we look at the uh, expansion and uh, what do we get here? We have added that flies chili and this statement, this statement came from here, right? And then because of modal exponents, we added flies chili. Of course, you can see that there is already an inconsistency here, that is besides the point. But autoepistemic reasoning fails on both counts. So, both the assumptions that we made could not be verified here and this is also not a stable expansion. So, we tried true true, we tried true false, let us now try false true. So, we do not believe that Tweety cannot fly, but we do believe that Chili cannot fly. So, again we simplify our uh, knowledge base. In this case for Chili we get this, but for Tweety we get this statement. Then we add that statement to the knowledge base and then we infer that Tweety flies. Now, our beliefs pass both the test. We said that we do not believe that Tweety cannot fly and we cannot, the knowledge base does not entail that Tweety cannot fly. So, that is fine. We believe that Chili cannot fly and the knowledge base also entails that Chili cannot fly. So, this is a stable expansion and in this expansion Tweety can fly and Chili cannot fly. The last expansion is when both are false. So, let us look at that quickly. When both are false for both the birds, we get this added to the knowledge base. And both for both the birds, we, we get those con this thing added to the knowledge base. And uh, for Tweety, it is fine because we said that we did not believe that it can that it cannot fly and the knowledge base also does not entail that it cannot fly. So, that is fine, but for Chili, the knowledge base does entail that it cannot fly because that is in fact given to us in the knowledge base itself is actually it is there in the original knowledge base itself. So, this is also not a stable expansion and uh, so we tried all the four combinations and we found that there was one stable expansion and in that stable expansion Tweety could fly and Chili could not fly. So, let me end with some closing remarks about auto epistemic reasoning. If you look at the knowledge base, very simple knowledge base which has only one sentence which says that not of belief in P implies P. You do not believe that P is true. And if you do not believe that P is true, then P is true. Does it have a stable expansion? The answer is no, as you can expect. If B P, so remember that we always experiment with B P. So, either B P is true or B P is false. So, when B P is true, 
not p p would be false and false implies p would reduce it to true. When b p is false, then not b p would be true. So, true implies p will reduce it to p essentially. So, when we assume that b p is true, we are not able to show that p is true, but when we assume that b p is false, we can show that p is true. So, obviously, this is not stable. Let us look at two statements. One says that if you do not believe in p p, then q is true. If you do not believe in q, then p is true. Now, this is exactly two stable expansions. In one, b p is true and b q is false. And because b p is true, this one reduces to t and this one reduces to p. So, p is entailed, but q is not entailed. So, which is fine with us because that is what we believed in. In the other, the case is symmetric that uh, the knowledge base entails q and does not entail p. So, it has exactly two stable expansions. Finally, a statement which says that if you believe in p, then p is true. If that is the only thing that you have in your knowledge base, then you can see that there are two stable expansions. In one, b p is true and if b p is true, then p is true. So, it uh, holds. In the other, b p is false. So, this reduces to the knowledge base reduces to true. So, it cannot show that p is actually. So, if you believe that b p is true, then p is true. So, it is fine that is a stable expansion. In the other one, p is false. So, there are two expansions, one in which p is true and one in which p is false. And the only thing you have said that if you believe that b p is true, then p is true. If you believe that p is true, then p is true, otherwise it is not true. So, you can see that while both are stable, clearly this one should be more preferable. I have written here, but you should give it some thought that. Uh, there is no basis for concluding that p is true. I mean, the only basis is that you believe that p is true. So, we will leave uh, default reasoning with this and in the next uh, set, we will look at this thing called event calculus, which goes beyond personal logic in a different way.